Hello and welcome to Hemo Reviews. So today I'd like to talk about sword steels. Now, there are a lot of steels that a sword can be made from, but if it is to be a good sword, a sword you can use, a sword you can practice with and not be afraid of it breaking, it needs to be a high carbon steel. There is no magic adamantium slash unobtainium slash whatever alloy that would work better than carbon steel does. This isn't to say that they used to have better steel than we do now. Actually, now we have a purer steel which makes it stronger. So, uh, the principle is the same, only we have better material right now. Now, let's take a look at some of the basic principles of steel. Steel is something of... Um, let's say a derivative of iron. It's iron that has a higher carbon content. If we want to heat treat steel, it needs to have a carbon content higher than 0.40%. Now, um, usually it's in the name, so we can tell how much carbon uh, a certain steel has by the name it has. So, uh, let me scoot over here so I can write stuff here and here and yeah, here. So, if we have something like an IC, uh, IC is a, one of the nomenclatures for steels, IC 1040, uh, the last two numbers give us the carbon content. So, here the carbon content is 0.40. The first number, that is D1, D1 means uh, that it is a plain carbon steel. So, the first number actually denotes what kind of steel it is. Uh, you can look it up on the internet, you have various types. So, let's say uh, one is a plain carbon steel, I think two is a nickel alloy, and five is chromium alloy, and so on. Uh, some alloys are appropriate for swords, but they still need to be high carbon. Exactly how, how high carbon are we actually talking? Well, usually it starts at about 0.60. So, for instance, the IC uh, 1060, which is roughly the equivalent of the European CK60, is a great sword to have for practice blades because it is very durable. However, because it has a slightly lower carbon content at 0.60, it won't hold an edge as well. So it isn't as appropriate for sharp swords as, let's say, a 1095 is. But a 1095 isn't as appropriate for practice swords because it will break more quickly. It will hold an edge better, but it breaks quicker. Now, this isn't a problem with sharp swords, because a blunt sword or a feather shard, uh, they will take a lot more stress in a single uh, rough practice session than a sharp sword is likely to see in its lifetime. So, 1095 is a good steal for sharp swords. Uh, of course, it means it has a 0.95 carbon rating, which is uh, past the point of 0.85. That means if, it's, if uh, the steel would if the steel has a carbon rating that is higher than 0.85, it means it will hold an edge much, much, much better than steels that have a lower carbon rating. Now, 1060 can still make a sharp sword, but you'll have to uh, hone the edge a lot more. However, it is more um, forgiving. If you hit something hard, it, it is less likely to chip. It might roll, fa roll back faster, but it is less likely to chip. Now, this isn't the only type of steel, so plain carbon steels aren't the only type of steel that are appropriate for swords. We have some alloys that are really, really good for swords, but they're also uh, high carbon steel alloys. So, for instance, the 5160, it's a... So, the 5 denotes a chromium alloy. The 1 is the percentage of the highest um, element in the alloy besides uh, iron and carbon, which in this case is uh, chromium. So this is a chromium steel with about 1% of chromium in it and 0.60% uh, uh, of carbon, which makes quite a durable sword, which is also corrosion resistant. It's not stainless, but it won't rust as quickly. Then we also have uh, stuff like the 6115, which apparently holds a really good edge. I'm not sure why, I haven't taken that good a look at it yet, but it holds an edge well uh, and it is also very appropriate for practice swords. Uh, there are also some other carbon carbon steels that, that are commonly used, uh, like the uh, 14 to 60, or some tool steels like the T10, um, and some other stuff. However, it is always carbon steel that uh, is used for swords. 
This isn't the most uh, important thing with making swords, however. You can have the best steel available, but still have a shitty sword because, because it's heat treated badly. Now, you can't really say how well a blade is heat treated until it breaks. Or, well, if it doesn't break for a long time, then you know it's heat treated quite well, or it, it doesn't take a set. Uh, it also depends what kind of steel was heat treated. So, lower carbon steels are more likely to take a set, uh, so to lose plasticity. Uh, but if it's a very low carbon steel, so let's say uh, below 0.16, uh, you might actually bend it back and not be afraid of uh, the loss of plastic plasticity affecting the breakage percentage. So uh, I think Darkwood probably uses um, um, uh, steel that has a carbon rating of below 0.60, so that's why you can actually uh, kind of play with a point and it bends back and forth a lot and doesn't break, surprisingly. Uh, but I prefer uh, steels that don't take a set, and I think that starts at about the 0.60 range. So a uh, well-formed 0.60 can be bent to over 90 degrees without taking uh, a set, if it's well heat-treated, of course. Now, um, how do you know if it's heat-treated? As I said before, you really can't. However, you, s you do have some indicators. Uh, the numbers, again. So, usually you'll have a number something like uh, HRC 52 or HRC 59. So what's good? Well, first it depends on the steel. However, the general area where a sword should be is between 48 and 60. It also depends on whether it's sharp on, or blunt. Blunt swords will have, as a general rule, a lower uh, temper. So they, they won't be as hard, but they will be more flexing and they will be more likely to take a set before they break. The higher the number goes, the more likely it is that the, the blade will break before it takes a set. Uh, however, like uh, if we have um, 1095 and we want a very, very hard edge, which has very good edge retention, there is one more thing we can do. We can dif differentially heat treat it. This means that the spine, the middle of the blade, will be soft and the edge will be hard. So if you come across this, you will probably have two numbers. One for the spine, which will be the lower one, and one for the edge, which will be the higher one. So it might be something like HRC 48 slash 60, which means the spine is 48, HRC, hardness Rockwell, and the edge is 60. That's a very good blade. It's both durable and it also has a good edge retention. Of course, if it is made well and heat treated well. Uh, the other thing you can take a look at is when the blade breaks. If the grain is very fine and sand-like, then the heat treatment was quite good. There might have been a smaller issue with the heat treating, but the smith really couldn't have known. However, if the grain is large, uh, then something has gone wrong with the heat treatment, and it is the bladesmith or the heat treating house's fault. So that's the quick and dirty basics of steel, so that when you look for a sword, you know what to be on the lookout for. So uh, the steel type and the hardness rock wall are the most important factors that give you some idea what the sword might be like. They are not the alpha and omega. Uh, it, if those two are good, the sword might still be crap, or it might be badly heat treated and advertised as, as something else, but at least it gives you some pointers. And this is true basically for all swords, no matter if uh, you're a katana fan or a euro fan or something in between. So I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching, if you liked it, please subscribe. If you have any questions, if you think I've uh, said something wrong, or if you know I've said something wrong, please leave a comment in, in the, the thingamajig, the comment section? I think it's, it's a, it's a thingamabob now, okay? Uh, so leave a comment over there, I'm eager to learn, uh, I've basically done some research for the past six, year, uh, six months into, into various deals and such. So thank you for watching, have a good day, and I'm off!